Welcome to the Billboard Music Awards pre-show. I'm Tetris Kelly. And I'm Rania Niptos, coming to you from the Billboard News Studio with all your BBMA award show coverage. We'll run down the biggest finalists of the year, give you a sneak peek at this year's amazing performances, and explain a little bit more about the brand new format for the 2023 Billboard Music Awards. Let's get right into it. The Billboard Music Awards are going to look a little different this year. Girl, I think that's a bit of an understatement. They are completely revamped, and we've got you covered with an explainer to give you all the details. The Billboard Music Awards, the show that recognizes artists who have topped the Billboard charts. This year, the big event is being reimagined with a new concept, giving fans unprecedented access to their favorite artists. This is Billboard Explains, the revamped 2023 Billboard Music Awards. The Billboard Music Awards are set to deliver an entirely new award show concept. The performances and award celebrations will take place at different locations across the globe and feel unique to each individual artist. The BBMAs will unveil performances and winners across BBMAs and Billboard social channels, or you can watch it all go down by tuning into BBMAs.watch on Sunday, November 19th. The Billboard Music Awards and Spotify have teamed up to find the most loyal fans. These lucky fans will receive a golden ticket that allows them to attend the performance of their favorite artists that will stream during the 2023 Billboard Music Awards show. Make sure to tune in to the 2023 Billboard Music Awards all day on November 19th to watch this one-of-a-kind experience go down. Well, I hope you guys understand now. The new BBMAs, Ronya, how are you feeling about it? I think it's so interesting that there's no live show this year. Well, have we ever seen that before with an I, award show? I feel like we haven't seen it before, but every time I think about it, I'm like, who actually has cable? Is anybody doing that? So I, I know feel like I don't. streaming <laughs> and online is kind of the new wave. Right, and it's true because at least in my own experiences watching award shows, I love watching the performances on YouTube or on any streaming platform or just after the fact. on Instagram, Twitter, you're just scrolling. Exactly, so they're kind of streamlining that this year to just make it more accessible for exactly what you're looking to watch, I guess. And what I also enjoy from what I've heard is that they're getting to do like these sort of mini music videos to the performances and they're bringing the fans there. Like the biggest Spotify streamers of each artist got to see the performances and I think that's incredible. I feel like having the actual fans in the audience watching performances, it just means so much more and they're so much more excited to be there. But you did remind me of one thing I'm gonna miss. <laughs> Taylor Swift reacting to other people's performances. That's so I like true. her dancing in the front row. We need to have that. That's very somehow. true. Maybe we should just get her out on every single performance and just have her in the front row with a little drink in her hand. Like. Absolutely. <laughs> I am excited to see it and I think it's kind of the future of award shows because we all know that award show viewership has been going down in the past few years so maybe this new format is really what takes award shows into the next gear again. See guys, the BBMAs, we're taking you to the future. Let's take a look at our first performance sneak peek, the man who reigned on top of the Billboard charts all summer long, Morgan Wallen. This year's finalists have achieved some of the top songs on the Billboard charts based on the accumulated stream sales and airplay. I'm here with Executive Digital Director Katie Atkinson to break down the top three finalists and take a look at their hugely successful year on the Billboard charts. Hi Katie. Oh hi Rania. How we, are you? I'm doing perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with an artist that you and I talk about all the time, Miss Taylor Swift. We gotta start with Taylor. Always. I mean, <laughs> she is the most decorated Billboard Music Award winner among female artists. She has mm -hmm. 29 wins. And just this year alone, she leads in 20 categories. That is correct. If she wins five, she'll be tied with Drake, who has the most of all time with 34. Correct. And, and that's... Given Assuming he doesn't, doesn't win, win also, but we'll see. It definitely uh, speaks to what a massive year Taylor Swift has had. Yeah. Just when we thought she couldn't get any bigger, 2023 came around and we had the Eras Tour. We had the Eras Tour film. We had three number one albums on the Billboard 200 because right. Midnight's went back. And then we had the two re-records, Speak Now and 1989. And 1989 is the, Taylor's version we just found out is the biggest sales week of her whole career, right? Yeah, which means we'll be talking about her at next year's Billboard Music Awards. She's already the biggest artist in the world, and then you think she can't get any bigger, 
And then she has the biggest charting, the biggest sales week of her entire career. Absolutely. And she also had um, her biggest Hot 100 number one this year, which was Antihero. Right. And it spent eight weeks up top, surpassing Blink Space, which spent seven weeks there. So, yeah, it's... The, the records keep coming, the milestones keep coming. I'm really happy that she's having such a big year on the Billboard Music Awards this year, because she deserves it. Absolutely. It's also been the year of country. How about Morgan Wallen? Yeah, he's our leading male finalist going into the Billboard Music Awards. I believe he has 17 entries in 16 categories. And yes, it's been an absolutely massive year with his number one album, One Thing at a Time, and his number one song, Last Night, both of which spent 16 non-consecutive weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 and the Hot 100. And last night was Billboard's Song of the Summer. Huge accomplishment, especially when you consider the Hot 100 and Song of the Summer charts are both all genre charts. He was really representing for country, which had a massive year overall on both of our flagship charts. And it really shows in these, uh, these Billboard Music Awards finalists. And he's also performing at the show. That's true, and it's a cool performance. It is very cool. So it's in Atlanta, and it's actually at the uh, baseball stadium there because he's singing his song, 98 Braves, from One Thing at a Time. I love it. And I think there's even going to be some baseball players on hand for oh the performance. My goodness. So it sounds very cool, very cool for the city of Atlanta, and very cool to cap Morgan's huge year. And lastly, we got to talk about SZA, 17 entries at this year's Billboard Music Awards in 16 categories. I loved SOS, yes. and it spent 22 weeks atop uh, the top R&B hip hop chart this year. That's correct, and 10 weeks at number one on the Billboard 200. And actually, the R&B hip hop albums chart, the previous record for a female number one was set by Aretha Franklin in 1968 oh with 17 God. weeks. So SZA... Just go ahead and just like completely Killing destroyed it. that that record at 22 weeks. And I just think that's so inspirational in general because we're seeing a lot of upcoming female hip hop R&B artists. Mm -hmm. We have SZA, we have Ice Spice, we have all of these really promising hip hop R&B artists. And to see SZA create this feat on her sophomore album, it says a lot to where R&B and hip hop, which for a long time was a male dominated genre, mm -hmm. is going from here. Absolutely. And SZA is just like the perfect poster child for all that. SOS is the gift that keeps on giving, right? Because Kill Bill was a huge song mm -hmm. before the album even came out. And yep. Good Days, of course, is also on SOS, which has been a long time hit of hers. But now Snooze is coming into the picture too. It's just like people keep discovering incredible songs on the album. Yeah, and, and we talked about it. the way that she's like moving R&B forward. The song Snooze is co-written by Babyface. So mm -hmm. it's another like, it's like a shout out to a legend from R&B's past, kind of giving, you know, passing the baton to SZA for R&B's future. I think it's just solidifying that she's such a force to be reckoned with, not only in hip hop and R&B, but in music in general. She's Absolutely. a staple and there's no one right now who doesn't know who SZA is. It truly is SZA's year. Our next two performers have dominated the Latin Airplay charts and are both nominated for multiple awards, including going head to head for top Latin artists. Here's a sneak peek at Peso Pluma and Carol G. It's gonna be about vibing and love and connection and, and the energy is super important for me so that it's gonna be even bigger if they are like there. It's a pretty special song from the album Genesis. It's a very good song to hype up, to dance with, to sing with, and I think people hug that song like a baby and, and, and they go crazy when, when, when it's playing at the show, so that's why I chose it. We discussed the top three finalists earlier in the show, but there are so many more. Unlike other award shows, the BBMAs rely on data, not nominations or votes. How are these finalists chosen? And why are they called finalists and not nominees like other award shows? Earlier, I sat down with Managing Director of Charts and Data Operations, Keith Caulfield, to answer all these questions. Take a look. First off, thanks Keith for being here with us today to kind of explain everything BBMAs. And the first thing I want to ask you is, why are they called finalists? I feel like everybody's asking like, wait, isn't it nominees? It's easy to be confused because every award show says, you know, and here are the nominees. Well, the Billboard Awards are a little bit different. It's not like there's a body of mystery voters determining who the actual nominees are going to be for the Billboard Awards. They're finalists because it's all just based on weekly chart performance on our charts. So it's not like a secret group of voters like putting like ballots into a box. 
it's really just the American public deciding who the finalists are going to be at the Billboard Music Awards. I like the ideas of the ballot in the box. That sounded fun. Secret ballot box. <laughs> well, tell me what else goes into making a finalist. An album, a song, an artist, what do they have to do? Well, we've got a lot of different categories of the Billboard Music Awards, and they're basically all based on sustained chart performance over the eligibility period for the 2023 Billboard Music Awards. If you have a really great run on our charts for a long amount of time, and you're in the top five or top 10 every week for that entire period, you probably have a great chance of becoming a finalist in that category. Well, how do they even end up on the charts? I feel like people ask me that all the time and I'm like, I should text Keith. Explain the charts, give us 101. How does a song get to number one? Here's everything you've ever need to know about Billboard's charts <laughs> in just 10 easy, minutes, possibly. Kidding. Start the timer. Yeah. So depending on which billboard chart you look at each week, it can be based on streaming activity, radio airplay, sales activity, or maybe even touring activity. And we take all of that information, squeeze it into our charts each week, and presto, out come the weekly charts. So that's a very cute way of explaining People in America, when they're listening to music on the radio, when they're streaming music on whatever streaming service they enjoy, if they're buying an album, buying a song, or if they're even going to a show, all that data is represented in our weekly charts. And now that we have the awards, okay, let's look at a category, the Hot 100 song. Yeah. For instance, there's five songs in that category, but only four of them went number one. Creepin' by Metro Boomin only hit number three. So how does it end up in top Hot 100 song category? Well, you don't always have to be number one to become a finalist in a particular category at the Billboard Music Awards. You may have like one or two weeks where you're incredibly huge on the chart, but maybe you fall off the chart after a month or two. Whereas Metro Boomin was on the chart for months and months and months. Well, if you look at the, that extended performance over a span of time, it ends up, if you just look at the math, Metro Boomin ends up having a stronger performance than maybe some songs that had a shorter run on the chart, but may have gone to number one. You guys are doing a lot of calculating over there. It's just math. It's just <laughs> endless math, math, Tetris. And so there's no voting with the BBMAs. It's all data-driven. So how does that make the BBMAs unique? If you think about it, the American public are the voters. When you listen to a song on the radio, when you stream a song, when you buy a song, when you buy an album, if you go to a show, you're ultimately voting for the Billboard Music Awards. So if you ever get upset with who wins something at the Billboard Music Awards, it's really just the American public who decided on what would actually end up becoming a winner at the BBMAs. You guys heard that right. I have all the power. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, Keith. The BBMAs added nine new categories this year to celebrate some new genres that are exploding on a global scale. Plus, this year we're celebrating songwriters and producers. K-pop and Afrobeats. Those are just some of the new categories added to the long list at this year's revamped Billboard Music Awards. The two genres are exploding on a global level, and songs, artists, and albums from these two categories will now have their own recognition. Starting off with K-pop, this year there are four K-pop awards, including Top Global K-pop Artist, Top K-pop Tour, Top K-pop Album, and Top Global K-pop Song. With nominees like Jimin, New Jeans, Stray Kids, Blackpink, and Twice. Afrobeats is another new genre the BBMAs are celebrating this year with two categories, Top Afrobeats Artist and Top Afrobeats Song. WizKid, Rima, and Burna Boy are some artists competing. The BBMAs are also adding two new categories for producers and songwriters, Top Hot 100 Songwriter and Top Hot 100 Producer. Some names include Jack Antonoff, Taylor Swift, and Metro Boomin. Finally, the show is adding a new award for Top Rock Duo or Group with Foo Fighters, Arctic Monkeys, and Metallica all up in that new category. K-pop is one of the new categories we just added this year. They did it because of me. I'm joking. But to celebrate, we have two K-pop artists performing. Introducing New Jeans and Stray Kids, both groups are up for top global K-pop artists and top K-pop album this year. It's our first time performing at the BBMAs, and as special and important this award show is, we have prepared a very exciting performance with two of our most energetic and bright songs. Hope you're all looking forward to it. Woohoo!
may be surprising, but not all artists who have a number one on the Billboard charts are included as finalists. That's right, a number one artist or song is anything that hit number one during the BBMA eligibility period. Keith explained some of that earlier in our Charts 101 segment. Billboard senior editor Lindsay Havens and executive director Jason Lipschutz sat down together in New York to talk about a few of our favorite number one artists and the year they've had. First number one we're going to talk about is Miley Cyrus, Flowers. The song spent eight weeks atop the Hot 100, and Miley is a finalist in nine BBMA's categories. She's one of my favorite artists. This song really surprised me at first, though. I did not think that it would top the Hot 100 for as long as it did. She's had other hits yeah. uh, in the meantime, but Flowers was an enormous hit. Like you said, eight weeks at number one. That is monumental. It's one of yeah. the biggest hits of the year, and now it's up for several awards, including Top Hot 100 song. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we got to talk about Drake. He's up for 14 total awards, including Top Artist. He is the most decorated Billboard Music Awards artist of all time. Yeah, I mean, nothing really says that I'm aware of how successful I am, like Drake wanting to take a break. <laughs> um, I feel like that surprised a lot of us when he came out and said that he might go away for a little bit, but I think that's sort of proof that he really knows like he is sort of undefeated right now and that most of the projects that he releases will go number one. They will be recognized at a show like the Billboard Music Awards. And now he's just up for a bunch of awards at the Billboard Music Awards where he's already sort of the king of, of, of the castle. He's trying to add to that total. We got to talk about Jimin. You know, obviously BTS has had an enormous run at the Billboard Music Awards, but this has really been a year where the BTS army has helped prop up each of their members as solo artists as well. Mm -hmm. Like Crazy hit number one on the Hot 100 earlier this spring, giving Jimin his first solo number one on the Hot yeah. 100. And I think seeing it sort of culminate uh, in an award like this is really special. And this is the first time we actually have this award to give out at the BBMAs. We're also honoring Afrobeats for the first time. So it's really cool to sort of see as these genres pop off and more and more people have global success within them that we're sort of neck and neck in honoring that. Next up is Bad Bunny. He is up for six awards total, including Top Latin Artist. And Un Verano Sinti has kind of been like a crowning achievement. Yeah, it spent 13 weeks atop the Billboard 200. We saw him sort of celebrate at Coachella with a headlining set, and we've seen him celebrate all over the world, really. I do think that the success of this album put him on more of like a global playing field. This was really a kind of watershed moment for Bad Bunny, and, and He's up for six more awards because of it. The last one we're going to talk about is The Weeknd and Ariana Grande, the Die For You remix. This song topped the Hot 100 for one week, and it's sort of no surprise. It really speaks to the fact that anytime these two artists team up, it's going to do well. And I think their individual fan bases are always sort of so eager to support them as a unit that we see it pay off time and time again. The Weeknd basically said, what can get this to number one? Oh, an Ariana Grande remix. And it really kind of got that push just because of that power, like you said, yeah. of Ariana and The Weeknd together. A huge part of this year's BBMAs is the fan experience. We partnered with Spotify to give some of the biggest fans of this year's performers an up-close and personal look at their favorite artists. Not gonna lie, I'm a little jealous. Let's take a look. The BBMA artists like Carol G, Peso Pluma, and Stray Kids are set to put on one of the biggest performances of their lives. And their biggest fans will be right there by their side. This year, the BBMAs have partnered with Spotify to find the fans who have consumed the most hours of music over the past year. These fans were instrumental in helping their favorite artists get to the top of the Billboard charts. The biggest fans received a golden ticket to attend this year's BBMA performance. Like, I want you like, I want you like shaking. <laughs> An experience they will never forget. Time for a sneak peek at our next two BBMA performers. These women are going up against each other in the top dance electronic song category. Let's take a peek at Tate McRae and BB Rexa. My Billboard Music Awards performance, you're gonna see lots of dancing, some incredible performers and dancers, um, and then also my first ever award show performance with Gritty, which is very exciting. The audience can prepare to see a version of I'm Good that nobody's ever heard or seen before. The 
CVMAs are all about the performances this year, especially with the new format focusing on performances all over the world. But the BBMAs have always been about the performances. Some crazy stuff has happened at the BBMAs, so I wanted to look back at some of our favorites. First off, justice for Miguel. <laughs> I know that his 2013 performance of Adorn was kind of overshadowed by that messy jump at the end. Very viral moment. Yeah, it was a little messy, but the performance was really good. Oh, He's an incredible vocalist. I love Adorn. It's an underrated song. To this day, it's like a fan favorite, and I think people just really connect with Miguel's voice and everything and he just He's an R&B key. He is and I love him and I love that performance and I wish that that last second didn't happen. Well, I always go to like what made him decide, you know what I'm going to do? Jump over audience members. And then I also yeah. need to like where is she now? How is homegirl doing? If you're watching, can you let us know Please, uh, an update on us. your medical condition? <laughs> And I got to talk about my girl. It's Britney, bitch. Yes. You know, her performance at the 2016 BBMAs was everything. You know, dating myself a little bit. That was also the year I started with Billboard. Oh. So it's like this perfect synergy. It was the first BBMAs in which I was working for the company and then seeing my favorite artist. And then she did that medley. I mean, oh my God, she literally straddled a guitar. <laughs> It showed, especially then, because I think it was kind of, it was around when Glory came out, right? Mm -hmm. And she was showing, like, I'm still the pop princess. Like, you cannot tell me nothing. Like, she was in the middle of that awful conservatorship, and she still pulled through and gave an incredible performance, as she does. Body looked good. Yes. Hits were great. Dance moves were on point. Literally, look at her. She looks incredible. And I'll never forget the intro, actually, because whoever did the voiceover, I love you, she was like, undisputed princess of pop, Period. Britney Spears. And Period. I was like... Period. That's who she yep. is. And speaking of Britney, one of my favorite moments in BBMA's history, well, Rihanna was performing S&M Remix, oh, which yeah. she already looked incredible. She sounded great. The dancers, the choreography, this like white dominatrix outfit she was wearing. Standalone was amazing. Then Britney comes out in the back with that uh, bunny mask the on. The bunny mask. And she looks amazing. She sounds amazing. It is one of the most iconic moments in Billboard Music Award history. Because I don't think anybody was expecting to see a Britney Rihanna performance. Right? And then, did you forget they had a pillow fight? On stage. I mean, on two stage. pop stars having a pillow fight to an s and performance. It was iconic. And I feel like this next one we both love, right? Yep, it's one of our favorites. It's the guys. Look at them. In sync. <laughs> Just got paid. They're so unserious in this performance, and I love love it, but even though they looked ridiculous, we can all agree, they sounded probably one of their best. Oh, vocals always on point. Yeah. And what I liked about this performance is that Just Got Paid wasn't even a single. Right? One of my favorite tracks on No Strings Attached, but was not a single, and we got to see them do it live and just be what NSYNC is, which is just an over-the-top boy band doing the most. And I gotta talk about one of my other favorite queens, Mariah Carey. She's the queen of the Billboard charts as well, queen of songwriting. And when she got the Icon Award in 2019, it was the medley. She did all the hits, just like Britney did, but it also was her speech. Mm -hmm. And like, everybody in the room got so emotional. Thank you, Billboard, for letting me grow up on the charts with you. Taylor Swift kept like looking at her, and I'm like, I am Taylor Swift looking at Mariah Carey too. It's so true. It's an icon doing what an icon should do. She proved at that moment, not that anyone doubted, it, but she's like, here I am, a personification of an icon, and doing it here at the Billboard Music Awards. And speaking of Mimi, our final performance is a highly anticipated one from our 15-time BBMA winner, Mariah Carey. Her performance rounds out our 2023 BBMA performers, introducing the one and only Mariah. I think something unexpected that fans will see is snow. That concludes the BBMA's 2023 pre-show. Thank you guys for joining us. Make sure you tune in to the 2023 Billboard Music Awards all day tomorrow, November 19th, to watch it all go down. Bye! Peace.